All right, hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to go over something really exciting. This is the setup for the conversions API through Facebook. So um, one of the amazing things that our CRM leads to ROI has is direct integration with Facebook's API. So what does this mean? Um, this means that during the Apple iOS and Facebook fight, uh, a lot of marketers were unable to continue tracking the iPhone users. And we have direct integration to still be able to do that. So that's pretty much the simple overview of this. Um, we can still track all of the iPhone users with the direct integration. So um, to show you guys how to set this up, we're going to jump into our business manager on Facebook. So go to business.facebook.com. And if you do not have your business manager set up, then make sure you watch the video before this and um, get all of that set up properly. So now uh, we're going to go into the business settings and we are going to be list looking under data sources. So under data sources, we're gonna then select pixels. It's gonna bring you to the pixels page and you're going to click this button in the right hand side that's open an events manager. Uh, make sure that you're selecting the pixel that you want to track all of this data. And it's then going to pop open this page. So um, now we are here and we want to go to the settings. Now, if you scroll down to right here, you can see here is the start for the conversions API. And we'll jump into that here in just one second. But first I wanna show you that we have the domains on your allow list right here. So this is the one of the things that we're gonna to have to do is we're going to have to add our subdomain from the CRM. So how, how do we do that? Well, first we need to log into the CRM so we're going to jump in and find the email that was sent to you when you first signed up uh, that gives you the login credentials. So we're going to go to app.leastroi.com. You can click this link and it's going to pull you right there. And we're going to then log in. And once we're logged in, we are going to scroll down in this left-hand bar and we're gonna select settings. So once you're in settings, we are now going to go to custom values. And in here, you should see the corresponding custom values. So this is the buyer funnel domain and this is the seller funnel domain, right? And here's the domain for the call scripts. Um, and so for this one, I'm gonna show you how to do this for the buyer funnel domain. And this will work for every one that you do. So we're gonna copy this website URL and we're going to then click into domains. And we're gonna add a new domain and then we're gonna paste it in. And one thing to note is that we're gonna remove the HTTPS for this, okay? We just want it to be your first name, last name, dot searchresidence.com. Perfect, so the domain was added successfully. And if for some reason you run into an error here, please feel free to reach out to our team. That could mean that there is an issue on our end in the actual dom domain verification side of things. But ultimately, this is the reason why we wait two days before we send you the ads so that everything is fully verified since that stuff takes a little bit of time. So now that the domain is added, now we can jump into the actual funnel and we can scroll down. So with this one, um, I'm going to do the seller home valuation funnel, C8. Uh, 
actually, I take that back. We're doing a buyer. That's, that's the buyer domain. So I'm going to do a, a buyer funnel. So let's jump into C1, how about? And now that we've clicked on the funnel, I'm going to select settings and select the domain. So as you can see right here in the drop down, we just simply select the domain and then we click save. So just like that, we are done. So now that that's been saved to the actual funnel, we're going to jump back over into events manager and the domains on our allow list. So this is the part where we want to click edit. And we are going to paste in that website URL. And same thing here, we're going to have to remove the HTTPS and then select next and confirm. So we've now added that to the allow list. And now we can scroll up just a hair and go to the conversions API. So this is where we're going to select get started and select next and next. Excuse me for one second here while I get this in the background. So we're going to select continue. And these are the four events that we want to select. So we're going to click continue again. And give me one second here. Okay, so uh, now for each one of these, we want to make sure that we select these specific options. So don't feel, don't feel upset if you wanna write this stuff down on a notepad because you wanna make sure that it's the same for every single one. So um, these event time and event name, that's gonna be static. We leave that throughout each and every one of these but we want to select, let's start on the first row. We're going to go first name. We're going to go click ID, client IP address, and browser ID, and last name, and okay, and we've already got the email on there, so that's perfect. Perfect, so now we're going to click continue. Oh, excuse me. Uh, you wanna jump back, don't click continue. You wanna now move on to the next parameter. So we just did lead, now we wanna do search. And we're going to do the same thing. So first name, click ID, Email's already there, client IP address and browser ID, last name and subscription ID. Nope, we do not do subscription ID, I apologize. Okay, so now we're gonna scroll back up and we're gonna do view content. Come back down. Client user agent, first name, click ID browser ID, last name, next, page view. Scroll down, we're gonna do click ID, subscription ID, client IP address. Oh, excuse me, not subscription ID, <laughs> keep doing that one. Browser ID, last name, and first name. So as you can see, some of this stuff is jumping around a little bit, um, but just go through, make sure that you've got all of these selected. Um, also, it's totally fine to select phone number. 
might be a great one to track, even though people are going to be submitting their phone number to you. So, but it's always good to select that as well. All right. So now we've got all of these parameters selected and now we're going to select continue. And now we're going to do confirm setup. And it's going to take just a second and we're going to select finish. So we're part of the way down here now. Now we're going to jump back into settings and we're going to scroll down. And you're going to see this generate access token. So you're going to click that button and this is going to generate the token and we're going to click to copy that. And we're going to go back into our CRM. So now in leads to ROI, you're going to scroll up and you're going to select workflows. Announcing the contact change trigger. So here's just a cool little event, but you'll see right here, we have the conversion API workflow C8. So this is tied to C8. Um, Let's do one for C1. So I'm just going to make this for C1. There's already one there for your seller funnel. That's one of the most used ones. So that's why we have that. But let's jump in here. So the filters. So let's, let's walk through the stages here. We have the workflow trigger name. So whatever funnel that you're doing this for, just make sure that you label and number them just like we did for you. So C1, make that the corresponding one that you use. So uh, survey submitted. So when somebody submits the survey, um, except on C1, let's see if we have C1 in here. We do not. So this is actually going to be a form. So we want to select form. So you're aware C8 is the only one that is a survey. All of the rest are forms. And actually, I'll just make it so that you have two options to choose from. So on, when you get your account, there will be one for the seller and one for the buyer. Um, so form submitted, we're going to add a filter and we're gonna select that the form is, and you're gonna scroll down, C1. So there's the one that we're going for is C1 and we're gonna save that. Now we're gonna select the conversion API and here is where that access token goes. So see how this is an access token. We now want to paste that into here. And we're going to grab the pixel ID. So um, right here, this is the pixel ID. So this is the one that we're on. You can see that it's highlighted in blue. So we want to copy this. And we're going to paste that back into here. And I would just make this value one because that means that each lead that comes in, it will count as one lead in the system, right? So now we click save and save. And we also want to make sure that we publish this live. So make sure that this box comes up and it tells you that it's saved. That means that the workflow has actually been done. And there we go. So we now have that tracking the data. Now, if you would like to test the workflow, you can. That is also an option where you can select a contact. You would need to create a contact. Um, or you could also test the workflow by actually 
polling test codes. So let me show in events manager, we can go to test events and we are going to copy this little box right here. And we're going to jump back into the platform. We're going to paste that and click save. And then we can run a test. So we can actually jump back in to the funnel. I don't know the name of the, oh, wait, I can check the name of the funnel right here at the bottom where we added it in. So it is kellywheeler.searchresidence.com. Okay. Now we're going to open website. Let's try putting in HTTPS. Okay, so we're getting an issue with the domain right now, but We've set up the conversion API and you guys will be good to go. So thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions with this. Like I said, I will uh, put two different uh, workflows here in the account. So there will be one for C8 directly that is a survey. And then I'll have one for all the others that is just a form, okay?